After reviewing frost sheets and liquid metal, I decided to go with a thermal pad. I have linked the one I purchased in the description. In the box there is some finger gloves and some cleaning items for the old thermal paste and then the 40 by 80 millimeter sheet which is more than enough for this upgrade. You'll need the following items. Your replacement thermal pad, a 99% isopropyl alcohol is highly recommended. Typically in stores you'll get 70% which is not good for electronic equipment. Some cotton swabs to clean the old thermal paste off or other cleaning materials. Scissors for cutting the thermal pad. A caliper that can measure the new thermal pad or you could eyeball it. A Phillips number zero screwdriver. A pick tool. and a pair of fine tip tweezers. First, if your Steam Deck is turned on, shut it down through the operating system menu. In my case, I'm using Windows. If you have a micro SD card, you need to remove it from the slot or it will snap in half when opening the Steam Deck so be sure to take this out. With your Phillips Zero screwdriver ready, flip the Steam Deck on its backside. You'll notice that there's a total of eight screws, four long and four short. The screws in the four corners are all the long size. The screws in the middle are all the short size. Starting at a corner, begin unscrewing each screw Make sure to do this carefully as you do not want to risk stripping the screw. If it feels like the screwdriver is too small, some have said that using a Phillips 1 screwdriver has helped. But I have opened my deck and my screws inside many times without issue with this screwdriver from iFixit. I have linked a good kit from them in this description. You can see the four long corner screws and the four shorter screws for the middle back. Set these aside for now. Now with a seven or eight millimeter pick tool, wedge it into the gap or ridge that starts where the right trigger is. This may take a little bit of work the first time. With the right side open, begin using the pick tool to open the rest, following along the same ridge or gap. You'll hear several clicks as it unlocks the plastic clips. Follow it all the way to the end of the other trigger and then it will lift off. You can set the back aside. Next, 
We will need to use the tweezers to peel back the aluminum foil to reveal a screw for the metal plate that covers the heatsink. Using the same Phillips Zero screwdriver, we will unscrew the three screws that secure the metal plate. There are two on the bottom and top left corner and then the one revealed behind the aluminum foil tape. Unscrew all three and then lift off the metal plate. The black screw will stay intact on the metal plate. Set it aside. Now we will need to disconnect the battery. Pull the black tab on the battery cable to the right. And it's very snug, so you'll need to grip the left side with your left hand as you pull away to the right. Make sure that your left hand does not touch the power button at this time. As you can see, this takes me a decent amount of force and tries. Using the fine tip tweezers, carefully peel back the sticker connected to the copper heatsink. Starting at the right side, this needs to be reapplied when we are finished, so make sure that it is put in a safe place. There are two screws, one on each side, that are securing the copper heatsink in place. Unscrew the right one first and set aside. Unscrew the left completely, but it will remain in the heatsink. Lift the heatsink up on both sides and flip it over. Now we're ready to begin cleaning the thermal paste off the APU and the heatsink. Using cotton swabs or whatever cleaning material you have and the 99% isopropyl alcohol, vigorously scrub the heatsink. I prefer to use one side of the swab with alcohol and keep the other side dry to scrub up the thermal paste. Continue going over until there's no more visible paste residue on your cleaning material. Repeat the same process with the APU as you did with the heatsink. This will likely take a little more time than the heatsink did. Make sure you do your best to get any thermal paste cleaned off the surrounding components.
keep checking your cleaning material for any further signs of residue. The APU measures about 12.8 millimeters across and it is square, so it's 12.8 millimeters on the other side as well. If you don't have calipers, you can use a ruler to get a rough measurement. We just want to make sure to cover the entire APU. I highly recommend putting the thermal paste in the freezer for about 30 to 45 minutes before trying to cut it because as it gets warmer it gets softer and when it gets softer it gets harder to cut. I ended up ultimately using scissors to get an exact measurement. I did not find it very easy to cut with my X-Acto knife. With the thermal pad cut and your protective glove or gloves worn, peel off the film on one side of the thermal pad. Once it's removed, apply that side directly onto the APU. Then press down on it so it adheres slightly to the APU, going across with it with your finger a few times. Then using the fine tip tweezers, try and peel back the film on top from the corner. This gave me a little bit of trouble. Now you're ready to put the copper heat sink back on and secure both screws. First, secure the screw that is already attached to the heat sink on the left side, then secure the black screw on the right side. Take the thermal sticker and place it back on the steam deck. The sticker should be centered vertically or evenly with the fan and the copper heat sink as the video shows. To reconnect the battery, align the battery plug back into its metal connector and use your fingernail to seat it all the way. Make sure that it is fully seated or the deck may not power on after you are finished. Now we can put the metal plate back on, starting with the black screw in the middle.
Then we will put the two left corner screws back and finally put the aluminum tape back over the cover for the screw. Take the back cover and start closing it at the left trigger. Continue to press down on it with both hands as it pops back into place. Make sure to go over it a couple of times from top and bottom. Make sure that there are no visible bulges in the ridge. Now we're ready to put the screws back. We'll start with the corner screws and one at a time going cross hatched or opposing sides. Make sure not to screw them in too tightly. When you start to feel it snugging up, then you should stop. Then we will repeat a similar cross hatch pattern with the shorter screws in the middle of the back cover. To turn the Steam Deck back on, connect the power cable, which will automatically start the device. If you would like more content like this, please subscribe, join my Discord in the description, or leave a comment below. Thank you and have a pleasant day.